All right, next up, we are going to be talking about on-ramp session number four, dumbbell movements. Yeah, so we've got quite a lot of things under this category. So when I'm explaining it, I try my best to like space it out. That kind of makes sense. Um, but it's a, kind of a lot of text, so do your best to like speak nice and clearly um, and try to break it down as simple as possible because there's a lot of things to absorb here. Um, what I like to preface the dumbbell movement section with is that pretty much anything we do on the barbells, we can do on the dumbbells and vice versa. So I had a client recently in on-ramp who, uh, she comes from like a strength training background but hasn't ever really used a barbell and she was really intimidated by the barbell and she was like, I don't know if I'll come on barbell days because I'm not used to using it. So to ease her into it, I told her, come anyway on those days because we can always modify it to dumbbells, like always, always. Um, if you're not down with the barbell, she joined class. I don't think we've had to do that with her once. I think she's just gone right to the barbell, which is pretty cool. Um, but that's a good way to uh, kind of ease them into it is that a lot of it is going to be very familiar to what we've done on the barbell. So we have one single dumbbell movement that we're going to teach. Then we have one double dumbbell movement we're going to teach. And then we have a series of shoulder to overheads that can be done with a single dumbbell or a pair of dumbbells. So first one we're going to look at is the dumbbell snatch. The dumbbell snatch is a single dumbbell movement. And 99% of the time, it's going to be performed alternating, so changing hands every time. On the rare occasion, we might have them do a bunch on one side and then switch. But like I said, 99% of the time, it's going to be alternating. So for your dumbbell snatch, just like your barbell snatch, your barbell snatch was the movement that went up in one swift movement from the floor all the way up overhead. That's the same as the dumbbell snatch. It's going to be picked up from the floor, and then with one swift movement, it's going to finish off overhead. So I'll show you a couple of reps, what it looks like here. Dumbbell goes straight up overhead to the floor, switch hands. Straight up overhead to the floor and switch hands. And some things that you'll notice here, dumbbell is staying front and back, north and south. I don't want to have the dumbbell facing side to side like this. And when I finish the rep as well, dumbbell is front and back. I don't want to be finishing with the open wrist here, uh, just for shoulder reasons. It's a lot safer to keep it front and back. Now with this dumbbell snatch, it's a bit of an intimidating movement because it's, you know, heavy weights going far up and down. Uh, this is a lower body movement. So just like your kettlebell swing, if you're using your arms, yes, your arms are involved, but it should be all about hip extension with that hip hinge going to the back and then through. Just like your power clean, just like your power snatch, kettlebell swing, all those movements are very similar. Same here. I'll show you from the side so you can have a look at my hips. But when I pick that dumbbell up off the ground, I'm sitting, I'm loading, I'm using all those nice strong hip muscles. When I drive up off the ground, it's all about that hip extension. I'm going to power my hips through, just like with your barbell. I'm going to shrug that dumbbell up nice and close to my body, and then I'm going to finish with it kind of unrolled overhead. At this point in the pull, we want the dumbbell to be like more or less weightless. It's about an aggressive drive off the ground, and then it should like kind of float. It's not really going to float, but it's going to kind of float up overhead. You also have the choice of receiving it in a power position and dipping back under. That's really like your power snatch where you drive up, back under, and then stand tall. So they have that choice as well. Um, so have them start with a light dumbbell. Practice it. If that feels good, they can go heavier. But I typically like to have them start by practicing a couple of single dumbbell deadlifts where they just work that hip extension off the ground, changing hands each time. Then we end up building some speed and some power and then finishing with the overhead. If that's looking really, really good, you can give them the tip if they like want to do them faster in the workout. Instead of changing hands on the floor, you can actually change midair, where you would actually pass the dumbbell from hand to hand and then do what's called a touch and go, where you just touch it on the floor and then go for your next. That's a little bit more of an advanced tactic because you can hear me breathing hard a little bit faster, heart rate gets a little higher, and it's less restful. So transition on the floor is more of a beginner version, which we like a lot. Um, yeah, any other points on the dumbbell snatch there, Sam? Excellent. All right. Next up, we're going to look at our double dumbbell movement, which is going to be the hang power clean. Now, 
We, again, 99% of the time, we're doing these from the hang position, meaning knee position. We're not taking these all the way to the floor. Reason being, the dumbbells have a lot farther of a distance to travel. If I try to get these all the way to the ground, my back tends to round a little bit. That's typically what you'll see. We don't want that. So we're just gonna be taking these from the hang. So again, hip extension position, we're gonna load back and then use your hips to drive through. When those dumbbells are back, you're gonna drive up, just like your dumbbell snatch, we're gonna shrug those weights up and we're gonna finish on the shoulders in a little dip position. It's kind of like a bicep curl with a bit of a swing to it. So typically when we have these in the workout, it's gonna be a grip and bicep movement. We don't do them too, too often, but it's good to have in their repertoire and they look just like this. It's nice and smooth movement, not too, too complicated. So that's your snatch and your power clean dumbbell version. Now we're gonna go to some new territory. So these next movements they haven't seen before, but they are going to see again in session five. So I like to tell them that as well. We're gonna learn these with the dumbbell and then next class we're gonna do them with the barbell. So these ones can be done with single or double. Three movements, shoulder to overhead. We have strict press, we have push press, and we have push jerk. Those are your three shoulder to overheads. If you ever see in the workout, it just say shoulder to overhead, you can pick. The athlete gets to choose, it's dealer's choice. Um, or we might specify which one we want. Strict press, the most basic one, but often the toughest because it uses the most, that's the hardest one for your muscles to do. Sitting nice and tall, dumbbell on your shoulder, elbow forward. Again, dumbbell is front and back, just like your dumbbell snatch. And very simply, we're just pressing straight up overhead. Now, I like to use this movement to really correct their overhead finishing position. What I see a lot is this. I see a lot of this with my on-ramp athletes where they press to their forehead. We want to press back to your ear. Bicep in line with the ear, head is through at the top. Everything is nice and sturdy. And when you're having them do this, make sure you do it on both sides so they don't get too tired on one side. So have them even out. That's usually the easiest one to teach because it's just a straight press. Now, after your strict press, we're gonna progress to the push press. Push press, a little bit more technique to it. We're gradually adding technique as we go. This one, you can usually go a little bit heavier because now we're gonna use our legs. With your push press, it starts the same, except now we're gonna dip and we're gonna drive. And we just that little dip of the legs helps get that dumbbell moving, which is why it's a little bit easier. We're not starting from a dead stop with a pure push. We get to dip and drive that weight up. When I dip, I want my weight to be in my heels. I'm not dipping onto my toes and crouching forward. I'm dipping as if I'm sliding down a wall. So nice and tall, dip and drive. It's also not a squat. I'm not squatting and then pushing. You'll see that sometimes with newer athletes too, is they'll default to a squat. Just a little dip is all you need just to get the dumbbell moving off your shoulder. And again, make sure they do it on both sides so that they're even. Last one is our push jerk. This one is typically the toughest to teach because it's got the most technique, but you can also usually move the most amount of weight because now we're getting fancy with the technique. Push jerk looks like this, dip, and we go back under the weight. It's a lot faster. It's a little snap, we dip to start, drive up on the weight just like your push press, but then we go back under and then stand tall. Very similar to how we received the power dumbbell snatch where we dip under the weight, same thing, dip, stand tall. Show you from the side here too. Dipping into my heels, drive back under the weight, head is through and stand tall, dip and pop. And these ones you can usually get going pretty fast. Once you've gotten through those three shoulder to overheads, if you have time, you can have them try it with the pair, strict, push, and jerk. Um, but sometimes you don't have enough time for that, so you can just kind of skip through that part. Um, yeah, those are your dumbbell movements.